Okay, so here we are again for another Amateur Friday reading. So we're going to go through the log lines, see what's good, and then um, we're probably going to take less notes this time as we do it, just because uh, people preferred to just only stick with the high level stuff, so we'll do that. Alright, so let's read through the log lines. End War. When every major city across the United States is attacked by overwhelming paramilitary force, a special ops team has less than 24 hours to breach the war zone of New York City in a last chance attempt to retrieve a device that could turn the tide of the war before the U.S. government takes drastic action and initiates end war protocol. It's really, it's interesting. It's a really long log line. So that you probably would want to see if you can cut that in half. Um, Let's see. Yeah, it's hard to follow. Parliamentary force, 24 hours. I don't know. My gut is that the log line's tricky to follow. The script may be at risk of, of um, being the same thing. Retired CIA hit woman is given 72 hours to assassinate a heavily guarded African despot. That's how you see it? Yeah. Before her own husband and daughter are executed. That sounds cool. So we'll probably do that. Um, and then after discovering that her oven is a portal, portal to the afterlife, a grieving loser teams up with her psychotic friend to rescue her dead brother from heaven. Virulence. After a mysterious virus ravages Los Angeles, a father and daughter trapped in the evacuated city attempt to escape from a horde of infected canines. Interesting. World War Z plus Cujo. <laughs> Um, Medusa Room, after an accident, exposes him to an unknown cont contagion that leaves its victims permanently inert rather than dead. Once a renowned doctor, he sees limerence for mysterious outbreak and prevent of a ward plague, all while trapped inside the ward's most advanced quarantine chamber. Well, I don't know why he would be in a quarantine chamber if... To protect him from the contagion? Yeah, but then, like, wouldn't he be studying it in that chamber? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But then, like, wouldn't, if it's already quarantined, wouldn't it be fine? But he has to save other people, right? Oh, okay, maybe I'm confused. So my gut is kill order for one, and then what do you think for two? Uh, God damn it, Medusa room. I mean, I like the silly no. stuff, but... It's too goddamn. I need to know if it sucks. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> Boop. All right, we'll down this thing real quick. I think I got kill order up. Cool. All right. Well, let's get going on kill order. Let's make sure it's up. I just need to close up the browser. Okay. There we go. All right. <clears throat> By Ben Stoker. Exterior, Dubai, Fountain Night. Super, Dubai, Lay. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. United Arab Emirates. Can <laughs> tuck me again? I'll kill you. Just kidding. I mean, oh, Uway right. is good too, but... I prefer Uway. I think it's much more, uh, much more appropriate. Culturally sensitive. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> Ali Saheed Fatih. Oh, this is going to be tough. 32, Saudi. Watches Dubai's world famous fountains in full flow. Lights flashing, music pumping all around him. Invisible to the untrained eye, undercover sea agents mingle with the crowd. How do we know that there are undercover sea agents? Maybe they have sunglasses on. <laughs> yeah. Well, but wouldn't they be? They wouldn't be very. But if they're invisible to the untrained eye, my eye is definitely untrained. Yeah. But that so would be my first question. So maybe that would just question. be. So maybe if you don't put that there, it could just be a surprise for us. That's true. Interior Sage Quarters Hub Continuous. Sage Q, a high tech surveillance hub. Banks of monitors give 360 degree real time view of proceedings. Xander Hackett, 50, Director of Special Ops Group, quarterbacks of the OP. His deputy hovers at his side. 
<clears throat> Agent One pretending to watch the performance. Spots a man in late forties, stocky, approaching Foothill. All agents speak into collar mics. Their words audible on speaker in the hub. Possible contact: five ten, gray jacket, jeans. Good. So this is an active start. Interesting from page one. Something is like setting up to go somewhere, which is which is which is awesome. Uh, ten yards from Foothill, the man reaches in his pocket. Agent One tenses, draws a gun. It's just a camera. Panic over. Asshole wants a photo. You want me to move him? No, let it play. Silent. The client could be watching. A mystery figure, their face obscured, hands away a slip of paper. After a filthy Durham note. A fifty and a fifty Durham note. Slips away into the crowds. As Foothill returns the man's camera, the boy approaches. The agents focused on adult threats are slow to react. We got a kid, Mr. Foothill. Fidel's eyes are and doesn't... How does a kid know his name? He answered a little paper, disappears into the crowd. What was that? What did he give him? I don't know if that's... Is that the right? Fidel? Yeah. I don't know. About you? I know, whatever. I'm going to pronounce it like a Texan. <laughs> Fidel reads the message on a piece of paper. Dubai, five minutes. That's it. All units to green. They're moving him? You didn't think they'd just hand him a mission brief and suitcase full of money in the middle of the mall, did you? What are we looking at? Middle of the mall? I thought they were at like a banquet. It was a fountain. Oh, oh I guess it's like a mall fountain. Okay. Dubai fountain continuous. Okay, fountain. It's like the fountain outside of a mall, I guess. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm. Reaches into the message on a piece of paper. Okay, five minutes. That's it. All units to green. Yeah. What are we looking at? Four subway lines, multiple points of entry. Gets a patch of their surveillance feeds and rotate escort teams. Okay, so then we'll do one through three on page. And this is the kill order. We'll do a few notes. I can't yeah. help myself. <laughs> one through three. So it's good. Rising action. Few. It. Like the mall thing was kind of weird. Mall. Um, give some scene back up. So usually, like, if you're bringing in like a location for the first time, you do at the top on page one. Like, uh, where is it going? You know, uh, Dubai. watches Dubai. Yeah, full lights, flashing music, pumping. Like, I don't know if this is. Well, I guess it's the world famous fountains, but like I would give some like there's a crowd around. I mean, and, yeah, I mingle with the crowds. Like, I like I probably would want need some more specifics about that crowd, or at least like a little bit more beef. That's like a really lean description for like a scene we're in, for like a few pages. So I would at least uh, fill in that scene just a smidge more. But yeah, other than that, pretty good. Um, five agents appear out of nowhere: black, white, green, red, blue. And now responsible for shadowing Fidel. The current team, ages 1 to 5, haul ass to get to the metro station before Fidel does. The kid, probably a decoy. Mobile teams keep an eye on, but do not intercept. Pink and orange. How do we know which one's pink and orange? Five agents. Is that the color they're wearing? Yeah, I don't know. And there's not really a way that's communicated to the audience. Like, 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 you can write which one's which. But, like, me watching this would have no clue, like, that they're a different color unless they're, like, like the Power Rangers or something. And they're, like, really <laughs> suited up cool. and, like, should be you sweet. Should consider that. Um, sorry, I can't help myself on notes. It's just a curse of mine. I'll try to keep them lean, though. So, color coding, not easy to visualize. I mean, that's one of the things, like, this, you know... Um, it, it helps if I can like see how this would be expressed on the screen and every time you're using one of these devices and like you do a pretty good job but it's um, but I just want to make sure that I can like really grok it um, pink and orange emerge from their observation points like yeah I don't know what, what makes them different from the other ones coffee stall gift shop so crowds part pink's gone vanished out of trace I don't see you 
Unconscious, Mr. Figure takes him as he moves away. Okay, so someone bumped off pink. Wait, I got him. Bump, bring f glimpse of Mystery Figure before they vanish into the crowd like a ghost. Lies in the kid, but something's not what cried. Lucian finds a needle. Before he knows what's happening, he slumps to the floor. Out for the count. Kid disappears into the crowd, clutching his derm nut, oblivious to the carnage behind him. Carnage? I think he just knocked out, because it sounds like they're not even killed. They're knocked out. That's kind of an interest. That's, that would be an odd word choice. I don't know if carnage is really how I see that. No entrails. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's a very jaded audience who watches Game of Thrones and stuff like that. But, but yeah, that's, <laughs> that's usually carnage. <laughs> yeah, that's carnage. But yeah, um, it's good. Uh, let's see. Mobile one, the other boy. Blah blah blah. blah. I'm not moving. I mean, find out why. If, like, all of a sudden two of your agents, like, just, like, went completely still in pursuit with somebody, like, you know, they probably would be saying, go help them. Like, get them help. Like, I, like they're not moving. I was like, they need help. Something like that. Find out why is, like, a bit weird. Uh, leans toward the Dubai Mall, opposite side of the road. Red hangs back. Blue on a parallel street. So I, I think the color coding is an interesting way of, like, getting distinction for each of these characters. I don't know, I mean, I guess it's more just for the read, right? Like, because, like, whoever the audience is just won't have any idea uh, if they were watching this, or at least I don't feel that they would. Um, it's a good device, I think, for, for the, like, the read. Um, I don't know how much it would translate into the, like, to, to, the, to the view. If these people are just going to be no-names going forward, um... You could probably trim this into like a summary, right? And say like, "Hey, five agents split out." Like, you probably don't need to name them mm -hmm. if it's just going to be like three pages. Not be like the main characters. Like, no, and like anyways. and like blue and red and green, like it, it it would be the same. This could be like shortened to like a line that's like the five agents split up across the mall, or yeah, across the Dubai mall. Um, maybe that's just me. Before, yeah, not easy to visualize. It's not really like adding clarity. Um, still no response from the mobile team, sir. All units into play now. Blue here is the order. Start to run. Bang! Comes out of nowhere. Clocks one of them so fast. Lost another one. No! Wizard. Huh? Wizard number one? I guess that's what they call like the oh. you know HQ guys. <laughs> yeah, but that's story is this. <laughs> that'd be really sweet. Yeah. CAA shuts down Power magical Rangers magicians. <laughs> I mean, I would. That sounds pretty good. Let's just stop this and yeah. start writing that. Yeah. Right now. Um. So yeah, I would just be careful with jargon. Is really what that is, right? Because like yeah, if it'll give someone like a like a well, what's that mean? I don't know if Wizard was introduced earlier, because, like, every time you introduce a character, well, you probably should at least have them somewhat in, like, the dialogue, because this is just floating heads for me. Like, I just see, like, a wizard and deputy and, like, I mean, I know the CIA headquarters, but, like, you're really, really spare on the action and really heavy on the dialogue, and these are just kind of, like, two heads just talking in some, like, nebulous, um, like, headquarters-type place, I'm assuming. Um, so that's something to be... I think it's good, it's like lean writing, but I would at least consider adding a little bit more. Also, lines of dialogue that are like uh, five lines long, long are okay, but if you're really going for this punchy, abrupt style, um, even like, it, like I would rather trim a line out of this dialogue and then add some more on top and bottom. Let's see. <clears throat> Just from looking at the page, but that, that could also be completely wrong. Uh, let's see. Um, so... Give us some scene description and action lines, floating heads. Class number one, another one. Getting help, he's running. No, they're taking him out. What, who? Guys made bombs for every major terrorist organization on the planet. Any one of them could want him dead if they knew him. <coughs> so that's a real... So I guess now that I read the line, it was actually, that's a little bit verbose for kind of the situation they're in. Or, you know, you'd probably just want it to be much more like, 
copyright because it's like go 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 it's like i mean you can always be like guys made bombs for every ter terrorist organization who isn't trying to kill him like you know <laughs> like mm -hmm. that's like a much more like but the client like there's no client it was a setup and they're not going to the metro it's a diversion see like and then and then you know escort team one but yeah anything like especially these punchy action scenes it's like over five lines uh or five lines like over four lines you, you probably at least can say like hey maybe it would be worth considering trimming it unless like hey maybe you know all these words count and that's another matter right but but um, that'd be worth considering. Um, you could even just have them look at each other and be like, "Set up," and then like have them being like, "Fall back," you know? Yeah. Like kind of that that cogs turning thing that you're like getting it. And mm -hmm. Just have them like not have to verbalize it, but just look at each other and be like, "Set up," and be like, "Fall back," and that that could be it. Exactly right, and because like that's relying a lot more on like the action and the visual part of the media as opposed to just the dialogue. So like, this beat probably could be a lot shorter and a lot more visual, which is all. Which, in most cases, like, is, is the ideal, right? Like, people kind of, like, especially in action movies where everything is, like, very, like, moving around. Yeah. That's true. Escort Team you 1. You be pretty. But you are. Here yeah. <laughs> um, Escort Team 1, Agents 1 to 5, start to shift. Media extraction, I would say. P5, make. Um... Vehicle support, we need an immediate extraction. Two more agents, sweet and black Audi, we're on it. Search the engine, slips in traffic. Get them bang, smart puzzle the rear of the car. Pull it, pull over, pull it over. Yellow checks the end of carriage, finds the exhaust pipe stuffed with trash. They're not going anywhere. We're out, switching the foot. Only three remain. 20 behind. So yeah. Like, I mean, even the colors didn't get up to number 14, right? So that's something to really consider. It's just, like, I would probably... I don't I don't know if I see a, an advantage besides kind of... Like, because cause when you're introducing all these colors, I'm like, oh, this maybe is important. Um, but it's not super visualized. Uh, like, all the agents are kind of blurred together into, like, a summary. We can be like, one agent gets a thing in his leg, like, and that would mean the same thing to me because they're not really like, these distinct characters, so... This is probably like, and especially 14, like I had no, I thought they were like, you know, seven colors, like red, orange, black, pink, and whatever. So that's kind of a, maybe I misread it. Um, but I don't know, that that probably would be a, a point of clarity, or I don't know if the color thing is necessary. Tony Mews had black and white, Tony behind. Someone get out of here now, red turn and spencer to fill. Dakota Stone, late 30s, mother, CIA operative, mother, daughter. Mother's... She's a mother to somebody, a daughter to somebody, and a CIA <laughs> operative. The many roles that she plays. She has a full life. Yes. But this is also a great point, is that I, as the reader, or the viewer especially, like, right, because, you know, um, you know, you, you all, I mean, even though this is, like, an instrument to sell the story, like, that's what a screenplay is, but, like, you still always want to keep, keep it very visual, right? And I can't, I mean... Dakota Stone, jeans. yeah, which is true, or like you know, it has like one of those headbands on, like 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 an orphan black or whatever. But like those those are, that's a really good example, right? Like you know, like the mother orphan black, cause she's always wearing this, like you know, that's that you wouldn't obviously do that here. But like, I need something visual that tells me these things, or I would just leave them out. Um, like what is she wearing? Like you know, like like wedding ring stuff like that, like, those are very clear signals, like, where she's, like, wearing this black operative stuff, but she still has her wedding ring on. That means her family's almost as important as her work, because she's wearing it in this risky situation. So, those are the types of things that can, um, make these abstract, because, like, late, like, you know, well, mother-daughter is, like, our abstract point. I can't really tell what that is without, like, seeing it. So, but you can probably use some ways of describing the character that can communicate those. Um... And then this is uh, P6. Yeah, a lot of my notes are on visualization, so that'll probably be a thematic note. Um, Stone dips her shoulder, Stone dips her shoulder into unleashing red same crashing. She removes the man's mic and gun. Stone fires two shots in the floor of the shop. He's got a gun. Doesn't she have the gun? Well, yeah, but, like, I think she's trying to, like, set him up or, like, 
It's on famous panic, yeah, so she's like trying to get everybody freaked hurting out. Um hurting the pedestrians out of the secret street towards Fidel, the crowd surges past Fidel screaming, yelling, inadvertently halting Black and White's progress. Stan reaches Fidel a few seconds for the agents. She grabs him, forces him down. We've lost visual. They're picking us apart. I can't see them. Follow Fidel's transmitter. Pulls the tracking data, watches the green dot. Fidel moves across the mountain. Black and white sprint down the street. Who are you? I just want to get away from the Americans, and I do your job for free? Isn't she a CIA operative? No, I think she's some rando. That's you like said coming she in. was a CIA operative. Oh. That was her intro. Oh. So yeah, that's right. So the CIA? Great question. Hmm, Maybe. We'll find that out. But then that's another thing, because, like, if... Like, Rogue there's no CIA way... <laughs> yeah, there's no way I know she's a CIA operative from here, right? Because she fakes being, like, a, like a, like a bystander... And then she's, like, not being a CIA. She seems to be, like, a double agent or whatever. I don't know. But, like, th that's, like, a thing where, like, it makes the character... Because there's, like, a certain thing where, like, you, you, you know something about the character and it surprises them because they're actually something different. This just, like, is not just really, really clear about who this person is. So, like... Unless she's wearing sunglasses. Yeah. And then she's, like, CIA. But yeah, I would, I would really push for clarity... Um, at least so, because you can't be surprised that something is different when you weren't even clear on what it was in the first place. Um, so that's something that, that could pose a risk. Um, Fidel's transmitter, stone, tears off the surveillance wire. What else do they give you? You're one of them. No, what else? Recognizing accent. That she's American? Yeah. That's also, like, kind of a hard to... Well, maybe. I don't know. Maybe you could just believe. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's true. Um, Stone takes that's Fidel's good. watch. I think he's had it from, like, oh. the beginning. But that's another character description's okay. Um, drops it through the rear window of a passing car. Fidel grins. She's good. On screen, the green dot changes direction, heading back towards. Doubling back, picking up speed, they're mobile. Car, hands out of the window. Right now, do it! I just gotta shut everything. To verify driver into the concrete, search the vehicle, find the watch, but nothing else. Where did the signal split? Corner of Azmazil and Alabrage. Go quit your day job. Yeah, I'm going to be a translator. <laughs> Stone seeks a public washroom, leads Fidel inside. We should keep moving. Cracks him in the face, dumping him in a urinal. <laughs> How's that possible? So she takes him to a washroom, but like, why, why would she dump him? him and then punch him in the face and dump him in a urinal? The U.S. Embassy in Mumbai. Wait, What? Leads him inside. We should keep moving. Someone cracks him in the face, dumping him in a urinal. The U.S. Embassy, Mumbai. What? I'll just go with it. We'll see what happens. Agent searches the streets for signs of Fidel. One of your bombs killed 33 American civilians. So? A beat is Fidel rather than as a prospective perspective client. Wait, I have money. Keep it. She fires two shots into his terrorist chest. So she's what? just going rogue and... Uh, She's an agent that's going rogue and just trying to kill bad guys. Sort of like the boondock saints of the CAA. You know, I never saw that. I have to. End it, Katie. I don't know. Let's see. He's dead, sir. No sign of the shooter. Lose. Yeah, but that's another thing. Like, I don't know. Like, it would be better. It's like showing, not telling. Like, you're telling me he's trying not to do, lose his shit. What are the external visualizations of him, like, Running he's, like, his rubbing his, his hair. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, like, that's probably, like, the first thing that came to mind for both of us, right? And, like, you know, maybe he's, like, pushes an intern or something. I mean, <laughs> screw interns, right? <laughs> They're so dumb. But, you know, like, but, but, yeah, I mean, I would think that, um, yeah, because in this, leave, like, you, you have to, you're leaving more up to, like, the reader, and then he's going to fill it in, and it may be different than what you want. Um... 
So you want to have enough that when the reader is like following along, he's able to like match what you're trying to have him visualize. And that's why like showing him the situation is always like the ideal, right? Um, though tricky. And it's pretty good so far. So it's like it's interesting. Sanitize the scene. I still, yeah, probably around page. Let me see. Stone strips gun drain magazine. Found this right away. Stone approaches. Don't worry. Huh? Oh, sorry. Am I going too fast? Yeah. Stone approaches. Face obscured. Conscious. What was that oh yeah. Face? Sorry. <laughs> Stone. Okay. Okay. Strides away. To buy them all. Stone approaches. Face obscured. Conscious of the C CCTV cameras, she freezes in front of her as a team of engineers installing a new CCTV camera. Light on the camera blinks red, capturing Stone's face perfectly. She's blown. She jumps into a departing metro, dials a number on her cell. So I don't. Let me see. Yeah. Her face was obscured. Like I thought she had something over her face. No. Well, I think she's, like, hiding her face from, like, the cameras like this. Mm. I guess... I guess I can visualize this. I, like, because, like, the, the problem is, or, like, the, the risk is, is you're doing a lot of, like, um... Like, capture Stone's face perfectly. Like, maybe you can have, like, a screen, like, light up, or, like, with, and, then like, show, like... Mm -hmm. Like all these different cameras, and one of the screens comes on and like gets it, or like maybe you like jump into like. I think the... that's what it's trying to say, but like they should yeah, like show a picture of it. But it's not showing like a security guard with all these tapes, like is like this person who's hiding their face like walks across these screens, yeah. and then one of them like I don't know, like that's obviously a bad example, but like. Or at least just like. Like a photo shot of it. Because like I get what you're trying to say when you write it. I don't know how this would be communicated on screen. Like, because you're making these points, like she's hiding from the cameras, um, you know, like the, the the light turns on and it gets her face. Like, I can kind of visualize like her seeing it, but um, I don't know how that same like thought process that the character's going through would be visualized as opposed to just like written out. Like, she's blown. Like, how does she know she's blown? And she's like, crap. I, they, you know, like whatever. Like, you know, like there's like. It's more of a logical jump if you just try to envision this just playing out on screen to, to get here. Um, super Washington suburbs, Mike Stone, late 30s kind of guy. You hope your own daughter ends up with, grabs a ringing phone. Hello? Honey, it's me. I need you to listen carefully and do exactly what I say. It's going to drive you away. There's no time. Please just get out of the house right now. What did I say? Oh, so it's like her husband? Yeah. Good places, but going. So they piece together and sees stone. So if the crowds are close, there, follow her. She knows where the cameras are. Da -da -da -da. Not to be underestimated. Feeds the locust to his pet lizard, Barney. Ring phone, we're all good. I missed the camera. Who this guy? This is like her, probably her, like, her homie or whatever. Mm. Late 30s, retired. Not to be underestimated. I don't know, so that's the thing, like, how do I know this dude feeding his lizard is not to be underestimated? Um, that's like tattoos? another... Maybe he does have tattoos. Uh, let me see, page 11. I have that's a tattoo. Like a... Don't underestimate me. <laughs> You're very, you're very intimidating. I know. How do I know this guy is not? Yeah. Mr. Camera, I'm on my way. Just so much to see. Got her. He knows her. The wizard runs a fish for commission. She's one of ours. Rests redacted. Level 5 eyes only. Rest, the rest is redacted. Oh. Daughter 6. Find out where she goes to school. <laughs> the classmates listen to their teacher. Daddy, get your stuff, honey. Mr. Stone. 
What are we doing? How long has Leon waiting to hop in my car? Gotta ditch it. So how does the, I guess the husband knows Leon? Daddy, get your stuff, honey, Mr. Stone. Is that a mosquito? You probably should close it. Oh, really? Oh, gosh. Oh, that's brutal. Oh, I probably should close my door. Whatever. Okay. Brief commercial break. Um, but, uh, okay. It'll be a commercial for, like, DEET or something. Yeah. Um, where are we going? Hop in my car. Gotta ditch it. Leon peels away just as the crown vic packed with agents screeches to a halt. So they're, like, kind of chasing down her family. Wondering what the hell's going on, Leon, right now. This is a where? This is supposed to be this is fun. This is fun. This is fun. Um, Farmhouse Day, England, three months later. Hmm. It's a big so jump. I mean, for me, like, I get the sense that doing a big three month jump is, like, I guess means they made good their getaway, but then it also kind of pulls some of the tension away. Um, but something to consider. I mean, we'll go to page 15 and evaluate. Um, yeah, especially because he's even like, I want to know what the hell's going on right now, and he never gets told on camp. Like, yeah. We never really get told. Well, I mean, it's kind of, I guess they're running away, right? Yeah. But yeah, but it's, it's I guess what the Miss Stone is like, like at least she like calls her husband brief, and like, she's like, get out. Mm -hmm. I missed a camera. Yeah, intercut long, Stone, Leon conversation. No, but that's Leon. Like, I don't know how her... Like, her husband doesn't even know that she's, like, an agent. I don't understand. I'll explain everything. Please just trust me. Yeah. Leon will be waiting. He's going to drive you. Okay. Yeah. She doesn't say we're, you're going to be out of town. He's, He's going to drive you. Well, I think, like, you know, that's kind of, like, implied. She's just getting him out fast and then... Um, well, I don't know. Um, let me see. She's one of ours. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah, we got that. Hop in. My car. Ditch it. This is fun. I don't know what the hell's going on, Leon, right now. He opens it inside his currency, cell phones, fake passports. Um, yeah, that's like, it's not like, I guess it's not like a, it's very something you see a lot in spy movies. Like, I would, like, Having to, like, leave the house and, like, um, you know, like, and, like, the job going all bad. Like, I guess you kind of have to have stuff like that in, like, a spy movie just because it's, like, the, 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 what you would expect to be the conflict. But I don't know if there could be something, like, that that um, could be maybe even more distinctive. Um, ten monitors. Alice gets out. There's my girl. I don't know. Who's your inhaler? Alright. Okay. So they're in like they're in hideaway in some village. I know it's tough, but things will get better, I promise. I need some air. Uh oh, Mike's Mike's being a drama queen. Mm -hmm. Mike takes in the sunset. But you knew it might. You put our family at risk. Fidel killed my parents. So you killed him, and now we're stuck halfway around the world. So I'll turn myself in and leave your daughter without a mother, your husband without a wife. He walks away. He stomps away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I would say this scene is like a little bit not melodramatic, but there's there's no subtext, right? Like it's exactly the surface level. Um, you know, they could be talking about, like, the sunset and, like, have the same communication get across. Or they'd be like, oh, well, it was nicer back home when people weren't, like, screwing up my life without letting me know. Like, you know, like, it could be, like, mm. I would use, like, an image or something in the scene to drive the dialogue around so it's not just about exactly what we know they're going to be talking about, right? Because, like, I mean, just with this setup, like, you've already done a really great job of setting this scene up. Like, I already know that, um, you know, he's pissed that she, like, murdered some guy, like, which is kind of weird 
if, you know, like, all of a sudden your wife's like, oh, hey, I murdered someone, we have to run and leave the country. Like, you know, that, like, that's very expected to get talked about. Like, that's what I, like, like, that's what I, you know, as the reader know is going to happen next. And the, the, one of the, the risks is it's delivered just like I would expect it to happen. So one of the, one thing you may want to consider is, you know, I already know this conversation is going to happen. I kind of know this is the bent of it. Um, but this is more of an exposition scene, right? It's like Fidel come my parents. So you killed him. Now we're stuck halfway around the world. I mean, I assume that he already knows this. And, like, maybe he's just, like, spiteful and he's like, oh, you're happy now? I guess you always liked the country. Like, you always wanted to live in the countryside. Like, whatever it is, I would really consider um, having some sort of instrument in the dialogue where they're talking about something else except what they're actually, like, talking about and conflicting over. And that will probably, especially since we know that's what's going to butt heads, it'll make this pop a little bit more. Um, yeah, I would do, what is this, page 14 or 15? Page 15. I'm actually going to put this in because I think it's important. So this conversation needs um, subtext. Can't just come up. Yeah. Um, did I get a divorce? <laughs> so. Probably, I mean, at page 15, um, you know, and you're 102, so I'm a, I'm getting a little ways into the screenplay. I kind of want to start seeing, like, a big goal. Like, you know, like, what could be the overall goal? Um, I don't have it, like, you know, even in Star Wars, even though we don't get to, like, you know, Luke Skywalker tell, you know, a good ways in... We already see this empire oppressing someone, and then you assume that, like, oh, that person needs to be stopped. Um, so I don't really see, like, the one bad guy that was there died, a bunch of agents got knocked out by some random guy, but maybe that was, I guess it was Stone. Was Stone the one knocking out all the agents? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, once she revealed herself. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I guess my brain is just catching up. Um, but yeah, so, like, I, like... I don't see that, like, I mean, maybe it's just her getting back to the good graces of the CIA or whatever, but, I mean, that's not, like, I, I, I can't really see, like, what's going to get resolved. Like, you know, what's, like, going to be, like, the big, what's going to carry this for another hundred and something pages, um, for another hundred and two pages. Um, your daddy can get a divorce, also very on the nose. Um, you know, depending on how old Alice is, um... You know, a lot of times kids will try to compensate and, like, you know, make their parents really happy and be like, oh, look, I, I made you something or, like, whatever. Like, you know, that, you know, no. What? No. As a girl in my class, parents were always arguing. Um, and you now they just live... just out that first question and just go straight to that. Yeah? And now they live in different houses. Yeah, I mean, maybe it could even, depending on how young it is, like, hey, one of my friends now live in different houses are you gonna live in different like yeah still that's like talking about i mean I, yeah it's just it feels a little bit on the nose um what's gonna happen i promise your dad and me have some things we work out that's all you won't leave us never you and your dad and i'm guilty of this too i've done this in my own stuff i've written so that's like that's probably why i have more of a knee-jerk reaction to subtext stuff because it's something i struggle with um never you and your dad are the most important things in the world i never let anything keep us apart I love you. I love you too, baby. Mike slips away. <sighs> I'm gonna. Should. What do you think? Should we call it on this one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna crack the door just a little bit though. Yeah. It is becoming sweltering hot now. Um, I wish we just had a screen door. Um, okay, so I'm gonna just skim ahead because I'm curious to see what the overall goal. Mm -hmm. When heck comes in, are we coming home? Come on, honey. We can still make trip. If you want to It's an old bar. Chopper came. Okay. I'll find you. Okay. Show the beef with the boss. And then, oh, I guess it is to get back in the good graces of the FBI. Where are you going? I've worked kind of just for a few days. 
Okay. I thought the logline was like about her kid, her family. I don't know. Let me see. Let's look at the logline here. Given the 72 hours she has been going before her own husband and daughter are executed. So that must be to get back in the good graces, but also. Well, I guess the CIA is gonna like murder their family or something. Maybe they get captured. I don't know. Can't get it. What about the wife? Hmm. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's. I think it's. It's probably. It's a good fast read. I think overall, I mean, my concerns are definitely like, uh, so the good, I mean, fast read, plot gets going, um, action oriented, fun, interesting, mystery box, of stone, uh, I mean, the, the stuff I would improve is like definitely make it visual. I think that's something that even in the notes I, like, I couldn't resist writing. Um, you know, that's something that is a, definitely a theme. Uh, if I can't see it, um, it's not there. <laughs> um, the, and then the other thing is uh, probably the subtext in some of the conversations, the family conversations. Don't just talk about the issues. Issues. Um, and then probably finally, uh, I would say, I mean, this is kind of the goal here. It comes not too late. I mean, it's kind of the exciting incidents around, uh, exciting, inciting incidents around like page 30 usually. It's like where it really kicks off. But like, their family's not in much danger. Like, there's not kind of an impending sense of doom. Like, um, which you know, something I still work on um at your beat moves on the sky dials a number who's that it's me blah 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 yeah so i i want to see like a i want to see so like the move like just kind of cut some of the tension and then Cool. That's kill order. Feels good. And then we'll do what was the other one? God damn it. <laughs> All right. Let's see where's this thing. There we go. I want another hot pocket. <laughs> Get one. We'll do that. This will, this will go fast. We'll, okay. Uh, we'll see. I think that only took a few minutes, anyways. Um, it's a classic '80s action movie scene where our hero Rick Park, 20s, sits across from two cops. Rick is the epitome of 80s action star. He's gruff, mean, and takes no prisoners. And of course, the two cops are wise-cracking New York cops who, of course, sit there and eat their donuts like the dumb cops we all know they are. Tell you got the wrong man. Did you kill my wife in cold blood just to get the diamond? I know how to put this, but things don't look so good for you right now. Why don't you get a stupid turn out of your goddamn mouth and start using your brain for once? Beats me. All I know is that you're going away for a long time. Good look over. Park popping out of his head before Rich flips over the table, smacks cap on it. Tell your friend to watch his arteries. Two young children sit watching a typical action movie that we've just witnessed. They whoop in delight as Rich makes his grand escape. Owen Wallingsford, 10, the older boy, turns to his younger sister and says, Rick Park is the best. I'm gonna be just like him. Jane, thanks. Jane Wallingford. Jane turns from the TV where Rick Park is about to break through glass. Danger is my middle name. He's so cool. My favorite part. Turn back to the TV. Talks with three Coke friends. Coke fiends? Oh, huh? sorry. Coke heads. Oh. I guess it's just like a different Coke vernacular. Oh, I like the Coke. Cocaine friends. I like those commercials. Uh, Mr. Pierre thinks we shouldn't trust you. We're brothers, Pablo. Right, come from that means we trust each other. And where is home exactly? I've never seen you until today. What does it matter where I come from? 
because all that matters is the pound of cocaine I want from you. Fake mustache, that at least your stupid cop friends don't think we're idiots. I'm not just a cop. I'm Rick Park, LA police officer. By the name of Mother of Injustice. So I'll see you in hell, you foreign scum. He shoots the three guys. Let's go play Rick Park in the treehouse. Okay. Um, don't always need scene actions. Um. <laughs> um, uh, no, wait, this is page three. Don't need cut twos. We've the uh, scene transitions up to the cinematographer. So they always, people will say, say to you. At least that's what I've heard before. I don't know if that's really something people say. Owen sits in the treehouse looking down a scared Jane. Just climb the tree. Can't. Yes, you can. Don't be such a pussy. But you want to be like Rick Park, don't you? What if I fall? You won't fall. You promise? I swear. One looks down. Jane. Jane and cast down looks down. I'm sorry, Jane. I didn't think that. I didn't think what? Oh, I didn't think that. No, she would fall. Mm. You made me do it. Promise? I swear. Write it down. Jane, I swear to never make Jane do anything she doesn't want to do. Signed, Owen Blind. Okay, church. What was the log line for this thing again? Let's see. Her oven is a portal to the afterlife. This seems very different from the log line's promise. Yeah. Um. So far. Yes, and we're we're pretty page kids? five. Why are these kids? Oh, it's now time passes. Henry says Jane. Guys, school day. Comes and saves him. Saves him. Jane now cries as this kids push her to the ground. Comes and saves him. That's just a typo. Mm -hmm. Now thirteen looks at a birthday card from Jane. Now twelve. Now 14 races against others in a swim meet while Jane cheers him on. Owen wins. Treehouse. Happy birthday, Jane. Your valedictorian takes the stage. Cheers to me all. Now 18. Packs the car. Bags to say college. As the car drives away. Joel across the room. She walks over and starts talking. Double date with Owen. His boyfriend. I sent the dining room to Joelle, looking every next to Joelle. And that's Jane's. Joel is Jane's one... boyfriend. Oh, okay. She just checked him out of the party. Okay. Banner reads, "Congratulations on your first novel." Owen, 27, walks. Surprise! They all hug and okay. All their heads in prayer. It's a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's a lot of. I think the whole life. I mean, I get the sense you're trying to do sort of like the, the um, what was the movie, Up? Yeah. But this is, Up had a very, very clear theme throughout it, right? So whenever they did like a life scene, they always oriented around, one, it was the old guys and the girls relationship, and two, it was all about going to that island, right? Or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So like they always like, it was all about them not doing it, or like him trying to plan it. Or like so, it all um, they actually had an engine around it. These I like I see Owen and jo and Jane as like a commonality here, but they don't really it, it doesn't really express much more beyond the fact that um, their brother and sister. Their they brother and sister, and then she's like, uh, yeah, I mean like that, that she's maybe trying to like imitate him, but like it's a lot. Like I mean I get the sense you can communicate that a little bit faster. Like this is, you know, like we kind of already get what you're what you're trying to say here, but like I don't necessarily see the page seven. We have something they're they're working on or not accomplishing. I mean, because that was like what the up one was about. Is they both met and like bonded because they had this dream, right? And then they, for their whole life, put it off. 
And, like, that was, like, you know, we already knew the characters, like, really hit it off, so we didn't actually talk as much about that. But it was, like, more like, they have this dream, they're finally going to do it, they're finally going to do it, they're finally going to do it, and then she dies. Whereas this is a little bit more, like, um, meandering, I guess, where it doesn't really have that, like, single, like, we're going to go to this island um, dream, I would say. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's mostly just trying to establish their relationship, but I think if that's all it is, it doesn't have to be as long yeah, because then it was just like, oh, she wants to copy him whenever he writes a novel or whatever. That's good. But it's a lot of, like, I would, I mean, usually it's, like, three to five kind of transitions is what you're maybe thinking about. Um, this is, a, this is like, a very, very detailed map of their life. Um, there's a banner. Congratulations on the book. Okay, yeah. Um, she's trying to, like, imitate him, I guess. Sits down and starts talking. A little... TV news, an angry woman speaks while the caption on the screen reads, novelist accused of plagiarism. Ooh, burn. Hmm? I don't know. I'm just going back to, I just feel like, like, that's this one little tiny scene, him looking worried, could just, you could just skip that and just go straight to... Yeah. Like, I wouldn't need, like, a whole scene of him... Like, stressed out. ...walking into an office seriously and sitting down and looking worried. I don't know. No, I think because it doesn't yeah. explain anything, but that's just going back to the same thing. No, it's absolutely right. I think and like it's usually, um, I mean, especially for a comedy that's like 106 pages, like that's, um, you may be wanting to look for stuff that that can trim it down. Like usually they say like 90 to 100 is like pretty good for con comedy. I mean, 106 is fine, I guess. Um, I would just really, um, you know, yeah, don't want to be a dead horse. Uh, Hank Robin speaks. You come over, I need you right now. He's always a good hey, man. Was she reading her own book? Or is she talking to herself? And starts reading. He was a god man, whatever that means. Proclaimed to be god man, but when we push comes to shove, he's just like the rest of them. Didn't really fear. But not mostly the habit. So I'm going to make a turn, and the car smashes into his car. Things go black. So, pretty interesting setup for comedy. <laughs> for an action yeah. comedy. Um, but yeah. Uh, I guess like I, I guess that makes sense. Um, maybe she blames himself for it, like... This is a really long build-up to, I mean, pretty much, the, the two things I know is that, or the three things I know is that she was, real, they were really close, it's like, for their whole lives, they made a promise uh, when they were kids to not, like, do we make something, do something he doesn't want, doesn't want to do, um, and then she cheats she on her book, and then he dies. I thought um, he cheated on his book. No, she cheated on her book. Really? Yeah, because she was trying to copy his book. And Are you then, sure? Because it was him looking worried. Oh, well, I think it was like, maybe they used the same editor, and he was like, oh man, my poor sister. Because it was like, I'm gonna, uh, Owen walks, sits down, and it starts talking to a worried editor. Jane sits devastated. Yeah, yeah so I think it was clear. Jane's devastated now. I don't know, that's not super clear. Jane, now 30, walks over to Owen, and she shows him a letter from her... With the fallen agent, I'm pleased to say, and who's this man? So yeah, so Jane, it's like her book. But that's not clear. Like it could have been his book too. He wrote a book. Yeah, but he wrote one earlier. That's why she was trying to imitate it, right? Congratulations, Owen, on your first novel. Hmm. In other words, she drinks way too much. Um, says his Owen's family, have their head bowed in prayer. They should at least clarify it, like, with half of her picture or something. Yeah. Or his, or whoever it is. Novelist accused of plagiarism. Yeah, I need to try, I need to talk to you. Breaking into tears, yeah, Fallen Angel by Jane Willingford. So maybe, I think mm -hmm. it was, maybe her book was the one that was accused. But yeah, probably clarity. That's the thing, too, it's a really long scene for there to be, like, a lot of any amb ambiguity there. Um, I wonder, what if I just die? 
course, you didn't say anything to anybody, but he left church feeling just as God, just in kid he used to be. Just because you feel this doesn't mean you can feel love. That's an interesting device, tying these two together. Um, which one is this? Page nine. but a bit of a downer for a comedy. I know Up was a comedy, but it's also Pixar, and they can do whatever they want. <laughs> but yeah, this is kind of... Uh, but we had a few jokes when they were kids, but like, they were they were funny, but like, you like you know, if you want to set this up as a comedy, they need to be like, freaking like, oh my gosh. And also, you know, surprising. Like, surprise is a really big element. I don't write comedy, so I don't know, but what people say who write comedy is that it's, like, a huge element in, like, you know, it's, like, the unexpected turn, right? And it's, like, oh, that's funny. Um, so, like, some more of those, like, surprising moments early maybe would, uh, you know, hopefully at least give, t like, some context as far as tone is for this. That's all. Later, takes a seat, buzzer head. Why is this happening to me? Some kind of test. Love, brother, successful job. It's my life. A lot of dialogue. Mm-hmm. I wanted to find me, and you took him. Um, like, most people won't have that kind of self-awareness. Um, this is definitely... Um, this comes down into, like, showing, not telling, right? And, like, this could probably happen up to page five. Like, because the kid thing, I don't know how much that makes it, you know, that influences what happens later in the story. Like, those are those things I'm, you know, still wanting to see. Like, um, show, don't, tell, long dialogue and it's the character talking about their character this is a risk on the nose how does and she said Yeah, this is this. If I was like a reader, this was this would freak me out. Uh, like like when I would see a page of just like dialogue and like ten lines and like a chunk, and you're you know, I mean even, I, I mean I would have someone read this out. Loud. I mean I can even read this out loud right now, and you'll probably like, you'll it'll be harder to like focus. Like dear God, why is this happening to me? Is this some kind of test? I had everything going for me. A man I loved, a brother I loved, a successful job. You slowly ripped them all from me. My life sucks. I have nothing. I wanted to find me. You took him. What kind of God does that? I mean, why? I've prayed to you forever. You know what? Fuck this. I don't need your games. I don't need to stand here praying to... I don't even know, but if you're not out there, this isn't funny. Stop messing with me. I've had enough. I get it. I really do. Now think, it's time for something new to happen. If you're so high and fucking mighty, why don't you do something for me just for once? For one damn time, just give me a sign. Yeah, I didn't think so. There's no sign coming. Fuck this. Like, that's like a really... That's a page of dialogue. Like, it's... And it's all saying the same thing. Um, as, like, and I, I, I mean, she could just be at the funeral, and, like, she just, like, slides a Bible off the table, and it just hits the ground, and she just, like, walks away. That's a very clear sign that she's given up, right? This is a, uh, this is the same kind of thing, right, where you're risking, you really want the reader to, like, you know, it's kind of like that fear that, like, you, you don't trust the reader, like, I get that, like, she may be giving up on God, and, one of the, the times you see this a lot is when, like, when you have these big lines, lines of dialogue is that, you, you know, you don't want to make a more concise choice that maybe would be misunderstood. So I would say in cases like this, really trust the reader and use something visual to communicate this. Um, Self-revelations, um, like, you know, when a character's, like, realizing they're giving up on religion or realizing that, this, that they're selfish or whatever, those usually have to be very visual. Even in novels, like you, I mean, I, I don't know, I mean, obviously this is just from reading a lot of stuff and like seeing what, what I found that works and even just like listening to lectures on this, it's like usually the self-revelation is visual, like her family's like, hey, let's pray for Owen. And then she just like walks away. Like I know exactly what happened. She's done, uh, which is which is what this scene's about. Um, and obviously asking for a sign. Um, but that is also like something that we see a lot. Like I think, like, you know. Like, you know, God, give me a sign. Like, that's, like, not a... Well, and even here, that 
that, and rips it off her neck and throws it to the ground. That like, be, that would be it. Like, that you could just cut that whole scene above it. I think. Yeah. You could have her, like, I don't know, looking yeah. annoyed or rolling her eyes while they're, like, praying or, you know, at his funeral, like, ugh. Yeah. But rewind the twitch to how, or, like, the feed to, to, to how long it took me to read through that, and, and... I even, like, reading it, like, I would start skimming over things, because it's just a lot of dialogue, like, we already, stuff we already know, like, yeah, of course she loved her brother, like, I do know that, you don't have to tell me that, um, so those are, this would be a, probably, this would make this screenplay something I wouldn't recommend if I was still doing a reading, um, so, but, like, stuff like this can be, you know, or it would just mean that, like, if we did want to move on it, we would have someone rewrite it and trim this down, um, or angrily, um, Jane sits at a desk with the same set eyes we left her with. Endocorp, yes, yes, no. Derek Winters, okay. We'll try to we'll get to 15. Derek Winters defines badass, built in gruff. Who knows if she ever thought love was real or if. Jane, my name is Jane. What? Hmm? So this is like her boss doesn't care right now. Office. Build with story ideas. <sighs> Legal pad stands next to her office. This is himself again. Jane, yeah, making himself, yeah. Maybe he changed the character like oh, a... Oh, yeah. That sometimes happens if you, like, change your yeah, protagonist yeah, to, like, a girl, then you'll sometimes forget to change your pronouns. Yeah, because there it is again. Next to him stands Derek Winters, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's Jane A-Man. He's 11. He's Jane. Like Jane Cobb? Hey, man. Yeah. Um, Hero man. of Canton? The man we call Jane. The man we call Jane. Oh. <laughs> Hashtag Firefly. A man we call Jane. Um, which could be true. I don't know. I haven't seen too many feminine pronouns. We left her with. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, his. Yeah. So my guess is that he changed his protagonist from male to female. That makes sense. And then didn't change all his pronouns. Um, who knows if we ever thought Secretary Derek. Which is a good move. I actually think this reads better with her as a female. Because, yeah, I actually really like that. Of course, sadly, you're going to need you guys to stay at work on Sunday. Oh, sorry, Mr. Stevens. I'm going to come to this thing on Sunday. No, everybody's coming. It's her funeral. <laughs> hey, Secretary, Derek, how does he... So is it a guy? No, Derek is the guy standing... Next to her. Jane. My name's Jane. Hey, Secretary. And Derek. And oh, 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 oh. He's saying oh. hi to both of them, and she, he was calling her Secretary. Of course. We're going to need you guys to work on Sunday. Uh, Mr. Stevens, my grandmother's funeral. I'm just a Secretary. And we appreciate you greatly. See, we even participated in Secretary Education Day this year. I got a balloon that said happy birthday. We're out of the apprent appreciative balloons. That's pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. You got a card that said happy 50th, Eugene. Growing old doesn't have to be so painful. <laughs> Should be happy they remembered you instead of focusing on the negative. Um, that's funny. Page drive. Tee. Funny. I'm not coming on Sunday. That's what's happening. Total prick hole. Kill him. He just trying to catch him. Reno just to watch him die. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. That's what Adam and Luke have been doing. Yeah. You know. This is not how I'm spending my Sunday. Oh, whatever. never stood for this. Might not have shot a man in Reno, but I own a lot of guns. But what's going to happen? We're both going to come in on Sunday and we'll both be pissed and we'll both complain, but do nothing about it because there's nothing you can do. Life just doesn't care. See you at Patrick's tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Derek. Please don't call me that. I'm calling you the captain. <laughs> I'm not calling you the captain? Okay. I think you should, should call him the captain. That's an awesome name. That's true. Do you want me to call you the captain? Yes. Yeah. Like Walt Whitman, or Captain, my captain. So this is actually interesting, right? Because this is a very funny moment, and the boss is like a bit of a caricature, but I guess that's that's, that's okay. But it's also totally different. Like kind of like the derpy boss, like I got you a balloon for your whatever. Like I mean, it's 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 funny, but like. It's your. I think you're you're playing with like you kind of want this to be like a drama and something that actually has like character growth, but you also want it to be a comedy. And I get the sense that um, 
balancing those tones is tough, um, and I don't know if it's uh, I don't know if it's there yet. I think you probably I think you're like really close, um, but I still feel that kind of the dissonance between those two co tones of like comedy versus drama. Um, so. Uh, just leave a stone on. What the hell? How did this happen? Oh, there's Evan and Screams. What the hell? Okay. So this seems really random. <laughs> the angel, the white angelic one with wings, jumps out of the oven. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> hey. What up, dude? Angel's screams run towards them. Yeah, so this is a great... You definitely need to foreshadow this. <laughs> you definitely... I don't know if I spell it. Definitely need to foreshadow I mean, have some sort of, like, magical moment or, like... Like, she drops the cross and, like, some sparkles have Like, anything. <laughs> like, anything. <laughs> or, like, some sort of setup. Because, like, everything is, like, really realist. And this goes back to the tone thing with comedy drama, right? Like, everything is really realist. Everything is like failed novelist, like this very like gritty stuff, and, and then, then like an all of a sudden your oven explodes and an evil angel tries to kill you. Well, like that's <laughs> yeah. definitely need to foreshadow this. It seems seems not just random, but opposed to the world you're setting up. Don't at least show a world. Show a world where this is possible. Um, I mean, like, think of it, oh, whoops, think of it like, um, what's that Christmas movie with uh, Jimmy Stewart? It's, what a, it's what a Wonderful movie. Life, right? In the very beginning, they set up the supernatural with Clarence the Angel talking to heaven, right? And being like, well, I don't know if I should go see Jimmy, but like, that, and it's a very realist after that, but that element makes like if that wasn't there you'd be like what the heck's this old dude doing flopping around like almost drowning um so like those are that's something like you have to and they did it from the very beginning and clarence like the angel doesn't come back until like a th like two-thirds of the way through the movie so those are the types of things where like even though like it's a wonderful life is realist all the way up to like the third act it starts, it, like, sets that anchor of this, this is a fantasy. Like, there is some, there's going to be a mystical element. Like, know it from the beginning. You have her just, like, find feathers in her oven another time. Something <laughs> like that. Like, sparkles and feathers. And I was like, what? That's weird. And then, like, yeah. lament her noveling skills or whatever. It's true. That would be good. I mean, I would be weirded out if I found feathers in my heaven. <laughs> and then I would be a little less surprised if an angel popped out. That's true. <laughs> also, making the reveal, maybe, like, the angel's, like, a really aggressive reveal, right? And, like, like maybe you can tone it down. The angel says that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then he starts throwing, or they start, like, he starts attacking. Why is an angel attacking us? Apparently he's angry. <laughs> yeah, he pulls out the knives and... Why does it say them. demon there? What? What? Is it an angel or a demon? Eh. Edit! Uh. <laughs> Page 15. Her pronouns... Or him pronouns... It should be... Hers... Demons... Or it should... Should be angels... Angles. A cute angle. Get it. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm probably gonna <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm probably gonna call this one here. <laughs> it's getting <laughs> funny at least. It's so funny. It's comedy now. That's true. It's That's pretty like funny. Promise. Seems like something um, I would watch when edited. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, okay, cool. So good. Um, good character setups, like deep characters on setup. I like um, like the heart behind it, but I just think it's getting cut text. down. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then funny moments, comedy done right, and then improve, and then this would be um, 
like build up your world so the reveal seems in context or at least in the realm am I um I think it's still wrong uh let's see what else uh yeah editing need to have matching pronouns just makes it a hard read um trim down the dialogue. yeah dialogue and set up language challenge yourself to express the same points in half room and make it visual. I want to see these character traits like maybe she's just like you know even like comedy like he writes and obviously like I can write one better and then they like laugh like anything they were like she is acting out like really clearly. I mean, it kind of happens in that summary, but that can probably be a lot more concise. And then same with, like, her uh, conversation with God. Cool. Well, that's that. Um, feel free to put comments in on the Twitch thing if you either, one, want us to review the screenplay, uh, send it in. There's a little click link on the bottom or whatever. And then, um, yeah, send your stuff in. We'll edit it. should be fun. Have a good night. Keep it real. Do we pick a... What's that? Do we have a pick? A pick? Don't we have to pick one? Oh, yeah. The winner, I would definitely say... First one? Yeah. Hands down. Kill order. That was really... It was good. I think it still could use polish, but it definitely had a lot more um, direction and put-togetherness. So... But they were both really good. Um, but, yeah, I think Kill, Kill Order at least was uh, seemed a bit more polished on this particular read. So... That's the winner, kill order, and uh, YOLO swag. Hashtag Firefly. Hashtag Firefly. <laughs> Go watch it. It's a good show. Yay. Yay. Let me think.